Hello, my astrological lovers. It's me, Danielle Carmelita, your favorite tarot reader and astrologer. If you are new, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back to my channel. If you click this video, you are here to break down the astrology for August. I'm going to discuss predictions and special events that's going to happen this August. This month, we will explore Venus entering Virgo and Libra bringing shifts in our love, social life, and relationships. We have a new moon in Leo and invites a fresh start with bold, dramatic intentions. Mercury is going to retrograde in Leo and Virgo, affecting our plans and our communication. The full moon in Aquarius is going to highlight collective goals and breakthroughs. And as we enter Virgo Yay! season, it's the time to get organized and focused. Stay tuned for all the details. And don't forget to like, subscribe. Do your due diligence as a YouTube viewer. That is how you can pay me. So let's get on to the video. So here are the astrological aspects of the month. And I did think, should I review last month's? But then I, I can do that weekly. So we'll just stick to discussing this month's aspect. So before we even get started in that, we have to have a word from my sponsor, which is myself. Hello, my astrological lovers. It's me, Danielle Carmelita, your favorite tarot reader and astrologer, your favorite professional astrologer, matter of fact, dedicated to helping you unlock the secrets to your unique natal chart. Have you ever wondered why certain patterns repeat in your life? Why you may deeply connect with a certain person? Or what is your true calling meant to be in this lifetime? A full natal chart breakdown can provide profound insights into these questions and more. Your natal chart is a snapshot in the sky at the exact moment you were born, mapping out the positions of the planets in the sky and their influences on your unique personality, your strengths, your challenges, and your life's path. I will delve in each aspect of your chart, from your sun, your moon, your rising, and all the intricate interactions of planets and houses. This comprehensive analysis reveals your inherent talents, potential obstacles, and the lessons you are here to learn. Understanding your natal chart can provide psychological insights, helping you identify with your subconscious patterns and your emotional blocks. This knowledge is invaluable for your mental and emotional well-being, guiding you towards what you need to heal and grow. For just $150, and yes, I said the price, and some astrologers do not tell you the price, but I am here to tell you the price. This comprehensive breakdown is a great investment in yourself, comparable to multiple sessions with a therapist or even a life coach. However, this is different because this is your unique astrological perspective that can guide you for years to come. Plus, you'll always have a resource that you can always refer back to whenever you need guidance. Whether you are facing a challenging time or simply looking for direction, the insights from your natal chart can provide clarity and empower you to make informed decisions tailored specifically to you, providing insights for for career, relationships, personal growth, and more. Invest in yourself and discover the wisdoms of the stars. Visit my website to purchase your full natal chart breakdown. Let's unlock your potential together. So we open a month off. Venus is going to square Uranus. This is going to affect all my fixed signs. So my Aquarius, Scorpios, and Leos and Taurus. You guys are all involved here. Venus and Leo is very expressive. It's very dramatic. There is also some romance there. There is luxury and pleasure. A lot of buying, okay? Taurus is expect the un unexpected. Maybe some innovation, some change, and some unpredictability. Anytime you have a square aspect, it's strong and it's going to be some conflict or some tension. Now, this fixed star is the same fixed star that is the reason why Donald Trump got shot. And it's 26 degrees Argyle. And I'm going to show it next to Uranus because remember, it's still there. And it's affecting Uranus and how Uranus is acting until Uranus decides to change out of that 26 degrees. The fixed planet is known for its intensity, 
potential disruption energy. So just Uranus is already disruptive, but here we go. It's usually associated with a crisis, intensity, or some type of transformation. Now, Venus is the planet that's moving. So we're getting more Venus than Uranus, but the two will go hand in hand. So you might be attracted to the chaos. You might be attracted to the crisis, which can cause some tension and conflict. People who are unique may be a turnoff for you. You may be trying something new with aesthetics and it's just not working that great. Passionate affairs, which is that Venus and Leo. But all of a sudden it's not working, just out of the blue. You may meet someone spontaneously and they could be a little cuckoo or just really off-putting. Maybe the relationship is a bit dramatic and this happened all of a sudden. It could be overspending and you didn't plan to spend so much. Or maybe you were overspending because you caught COVID. Because Uranus is associated to me with COVID. No. Um, there's something with technology, like you spending too much on a website or something dealing with the future or science. Or maybe your hopes and dreams, like something you were really hoping for. This is supposed to help you achieve your dreams and then you end up spending too much. Maybe you are creating something out of the box and people are just not drawn to it. They're not really feeling it. In relationships, there could be some unpredictable changes. Maybe a need for freedom. Maybe you're experimenting and it didn't go right. Venus is also in charge of our finances and what we value. So there could be some instability with finances. Maybe you're reevaluating your values. Maybe there's some innovative investments that you're going to make and it doesn't quite work out. Worldwide and socially as a collective, there could be some social or cultural shifts. The financial and economic market may crash or do some unpredictable disruptions. The market might crash or go up and down. I don't know what you really call that. There could be some maybe artistic revolution. There could be shifts in relationships. Um, maybe something dealing with gender. Maybe we de redefining relationships. Media could have some disruptions. Maybe there's a protest or a social movement causing a rebellion for change. And that's how we're opening up August. So get ready for that. So right after Venus leaves Leo, October 4th, Venus will be entering Virgo. Venus in Virgo, first of all, Venus is all about love and relationships, right? Harmony and balance, aesthetics and beauty, art, your personal style, pleasure and enjoyment, like sensuality and luxury. It's also about your values and worth, what you deem worthy. So like your self or personal values, material wealth. It also wants social harmony. So social graces, conflict resolution. A wide world scale, Venus is about our global relations, our global finances, cultural trends and cultural arts, social movements and social values. Now Venus entering Virgo, all of a sudden you are joining a workout party. I had those for one of my birthdays. But you will be more practical in love. You're paying more attention to detail when it comes to aesthetics and beauty. Venus and Virgo can bring out more of the health and wellness aspect. So maybe you're buying workout clothes or maybe there's some self-care enhancements going on and there's a focus on that. It can also be organizing relationships, making them more efficient and functional. Virgo is very service-orientated energy. So the Virgo energy is going to promote more service, more support, more acts of being in service, especially being supportive in relationships. We're going to refine beauty, making things have more of a natural charm or making things more subtle. Maybe critiquing the aesthetics and improving them. Virgo is very, it's a, it's a very perfectionist kind of energy. So it's like narrowing down, narrowing and trying to make it perfect. There is this balance between work and love. There's going to be more of an analytical approach when it's involving relationships or when you are looking at beauty and art. And there's selective affection. Venus in Virgo is going to be more discerning with matters of the heart. Now here are all the aspects just on Venus alone and I'm going to discuss them within this video but I just want to put this up if you're just here for Venus alone. On the same day we have this new moon in Leo and it's happening in 12 degrees. First of all 12 degrees is a Pisces degree so that means there's some ending. We're, do we're talking about intuition, we're talking about self-sacrifice energy or maybe secrets or things that are very um, in the dark or there's like illusions here. And I look up the Sabian symbol for 12 degrees in the sign Leo. I'm actually looking at 13 degrees. It's all about retrospect and history. An old sea captain rocking. It's about history repeating itself maturity, wisdom, 
And this battle may take place in your mind, but you've done this before, so you can conquer this. It's about skills you already developed and skills that you already have. There's retirement, there's withdrawal, nostalgia, ruminous energy, longing, contemplation, meditation, the past, resting, and contentment. That's all gonna be involved with this new moon in Leo. And whenever you have a new moon, it's all about new beginnings and new intentions. There is creativity and self-expression. New moons are about new moons are about new beginnings, new intentions, fresh starts. It's about manifesting. And when you have it in the sign Leo, there it's all about creativity and self-expression. Maybe you have some artistic pursuits you want to manifest. Personal branding, I love that one. For example, like a social media profile, building your website, launching your own personal project. This new moon can also, you can, can manifest confidence, some leadership skills, bracing some joy, having some childlike wonder because Leo is very happy. Also, if you want to be on stage and you want everyone to look at you, you want some attention, this is great to manifest that. Now, the aspects for this new moon to me is positive. It's going to sex out Mars and Gemini, and Mars is already energetic. There's action, and with this Gemini energy, you're going to have dynamic thinking. It's also going to sex out Jupiter and Gemini. Jupiter represents expansive and growth. So, with this new moon, there could be some intellectual curiosity both enhancing creativity and expression and expression dynamic communication and social engagement and it'll be effective effective communication so you may be looking back with that 12 degrees and there's something involving some maturity and doing something over and um, pisces is very mature because it's at the end of the zodiac sign and it does also represent something that you can't quite see but you feel it i think that this new moon is going to be informative for a lot of us there will be some intellectual growth and in learning and confidence at the same time if you want to know any new moon rituals regarding leo you're going to have to check out my membership club because i will be discussing that there the link is down below now august 4th there's a lot to unpack on this day. mercury is going to station retrograde in a sign of virgo if you haven't already been feeling this i don't know what you've been up to, but I've been in these streets and I've been witnessing it and been hearing it. Anytime we have Mercury retrograding, you need to do the RE words. Reevaluate, review, reflect, revise, reorganize, reconnect, reconsider, repair, revisit, reassess, rebalance, redo, reaffirm, recheck, reclaim, recollect, reconfigure, reestablish, reexamine, and reevent. Just use all the RE words. Even remember try to remember if you have any mercury retrograding it's a time to slow down it's a time not to put out projects but to just write it out and plan it out in your head or at home not actually publish the items that you're working on not put them out in the world because you need to have time to reflect and reassess and look at all the dots that need to dot the i's and cross all the t's it's also not a ideal to start a new venture but excellent for refining what already exists and reviewing also with all mercury retrogrades there are communication delays or difficulties misunderstandings uh, communication breakdowns delays in communication we have technical glitches device may malfunction i just had someone call and say they were kicked off of social media so that can even happen even though you didn't do anything but that's a malfunction software issues you may lose some data some data um this also affects your travel so travel disruptions delays and cancellations traffic problems and uh, we've already been having that in la maybe even losing your luggage there are scheduling conflicts with this too appointment mix-ups changes in plans confusions over the date and the times, losing a text message, not receiving an email, that can all happen. Maybe you signed a contract and you didn't read the fine print. That's also a Mercury in retrograde. So some agreement issues, misinterpretations with agreements, signing some errors, delays, and finalizing some deals. Now with personal relationships, there could be some conflict because Mercury is in charge of our communication. So you can have some arguments, some misunderstandings, some gossip, revisiting old issues, and emotional confusion because the intentions are misinterpreted. Now, Mercury is also in charge of our trade, and that's dealing with our finances, commerce. So some financial errors, 
Maybe you bought something and it was the wrong price. You tried to return something, you didn't get the money back. There could be banking issues, budget miscalculations, investment mistakes. You may even lose or misplace an item, especially something that's dealing with travel, like losing your keys or maybe documents you have to sign, maybe even forgetting you have an appointment. Project delays can happen with Mercury Retrograde. The project is moving slow. There's no progression. There's needs for revisions. Maybe there's a miscommunication with the team if you're working with a team. And you can have repetitive problems because Retrograde is just constantly reminding you. So reoccurring issues, patterns and errors keep coming up at the over and over. And again, this could be also because there's some communication disruptions. Now, Mercury retrograde is happening in the earth sign, which is in the sign Virgo. It's also going to happen in a, in a fire sign, which is in the sign Leo. But whenever you have it in an earth sign, it's very serious kind of energy and it's dealing with practicality. So practical matters will be on your mind. You're going to review the basics. It kind of strips it down to a very simple format. You need to be very clear when you're communicating and do things on time. Stick to the budget. Maybe even reconnect with Mother Earth because it's an earth sign. So go outside, use your physical body, heal your body, clean your body, clear things out, organize things, reconnect with some health matters. Also, maybe you want to deal with people who are healing, healers. Or people who are of service. Or maybe you're going to call an, er an old Virgo friend. Mercury in Virgo is all about precision and detail. We're going to be dealing with some health routines, some work habits, and because it's retrograding, we're going to be revisiting all these things. Maybe we have to complete an old task and you need to have clear communication and make sure you check all your technology, back up your information, back up your data, back up your videos. And if you have any travel plans, you just have to be flexible and adaptable. Globally, this could be messing with tech disruption as well. Public service efficiency can also be a thing because we are dealing with the service of Virgo. Now here are all the dates while Mercury's retrograding. Um, I also want to say um, while you're looking at the dates and all that stuff, but I, I want to say that last time Mercury was retrograding the sign Virgo, there were a lot of rumors of people having cancer or um, people being diagnosed with cancer. And then, you know, when it finally went direct, um, maybe they had stage one cancer. So you can still have cancer but it's not as bad as you think. When I say health is an issue, it could be a health scare that could be happening and it really makes people really evaluate their health. Anything dealing with healers, there could be some gossip with healers or people who are of service to others. There could be a lot of discussions of other people's health. And because we are dealing with a son in Leo, I find that we are going to be talking about a lot of people who are leaders or presidents in their health. Now, August 8th, Venus is gonna conjunct Mercury. While it's retrograding in the sign Virgo. So we are going to be analyzing our love and our relationships, darling. Maybe we'll be really practical in love now, like really discussing our relationship issues, setting a realistic expectation for one, for one another, discussing like how can we actually support each other in a really practical way. You might be revisiting and reflecting on relationships, especially if you know a Virgo in your life. Clear and thoughtful communication, maybe detailed communication. There are some financial and practical matters that could be coming up. Maybe people are more attention to details and um, when it's dealing with a creative project. Now, this is a conjunction. So you can probably have good and bad. Conjunctions are very strong, right? This is gonna mostly affect our Virgos or any mutable signs, but it could be that you're really focused on perfection or you're really critical and you're really taking your time and moving slow with a certain project because Virgo energy will move slow. Be careful of the criticism. Be careful of being too practical. Be careful of just really slow energy. Even though Mercury is retrograding, you do want to take your time. But sometimes um, Virgo is so in, so much into their perfection that they don't want to release something. And this is not the time to release it, but it's like it never gets released. Now we jump all the way to August 14th and Mars is going to conjunct Jupiter and assign Gemini. Now this is really good for any physical activity and it's all about moving fast. A lot of things are probably going to move fast with this. You may feel really physically strong. Like it's like muscle action. So like if you want to work out, if you have something to do in the yard, if you have to physically push or move things, this is great energy for that. If you have to give birth, you're going to be giving birth fast and you can physically do it with this. 
Great for athletic energy as well, because Mars is all about physical athletic energy, competitions. And in the sign Gemini is gonna move fast and you can learn something and multitask at the same time while doing this physical activity. But be careful because it does move fast. You may take some unnecessary risk with this because you're dealing with a conjunction and conjunction is good and bad, okay? And it's strong. So the energy is like double Gemini, as if you need double Gemini energy. But you may be prone to accidents. Gambling could be happening with this. And you may be feeling like you're lucky because you're really optimistic. So it may work out for you, but it's really like the thought of the optimism. The optimism is really taking over. So you really feel like luck is on your side and that could cause you to be lucky. You know the, you know how if you think positive, so is positive, um, but there's confidence with this. Intellectual curiosity and learning, a hunger for knowledge, effective communication and persuading people is probably big with this. Um, very versatile action, dynamic activities, there's growth and expansion and opportunities for growth and expansion, but you can overextend yourself physically. You can be really excessive with taking the risk, so be careful with that. You may be taking on too much too, because Jupiter thinks it can do it all, because it's so overly optimistic. Um, also, you could be impulsive. And whatever you decide to do, make sure you think of the consequences so you won't be impulsive. Um, there could be an overwhelming amount of information, gossip, people in the news just giving you way too much information and it's coming so fast. I'm talking about how Trump got shot and then literally it seemed like a blink in the eye, then Biden said he's stepping down. And it happened so fast and I feel like this is the same kind of energy, except for someone may not get shot, but just information is really coming to us fast and there's like an overload of information. And you may have a difficulty staying focused and you could be over committing to things or talking too much when you're trying to pursue something. Know it all and you're very arrogant with your knowledge. You can make some hasty decisions, difficulty in settling in, have a restless mind. This could really boost travel and tourism globally and collectively. And there could be a surge of communication with social media. So watch out for those things that could be happening. Also, this can really push your community and wanting to do something and your siblings or something that's dealing with early learning. All that could be really big with this too, okay? That same day, Mercury will be retrograding still and it will enter Leo. Again, you're going to be revisiting projects, but maybe revisiting some creative projects. Leo is very passionate and fiery and dramatic. And all that is could be stirring up or as like rumors. It's also about the self and a little vain energy, but you may be revisiting some self-expression or reflecting on your identity, um, addressing some misunderstandings and relationships because it's very romantic, this Leo energy. Anything that was creative and creative is not just art, okay? Anything that you created or developed may have to be reassessed too. And reviewing your communicative style, um, Mercury uh, retrograding in the sign Leo could cause a lot of arguments and conflicts. Okay, so get ready for that. The news may be discussing actors and celebrities and love affairs, children, child celebrities, influencers, discussions of fire or, um, you know, cats, like I'm talking about huge cats, like tigers and lions, discussions on people's ego and their arrogance and presidents and leaders and royalty. This is also about children, not just children celebrities, but children alone and gambling or maybe your children. Births and um, giving birth, um, directors, because Leo, um, giving birth, like, because Leo is about fertility too. It could be matters of the heart or the physical art, heart, um, your father, gold, people who cheat, um, yellow, orange, lemons, all that, the sunflowers, all that is Leo energy too. I just want to throw that out there because you never know that could be a conflict. Um, people who are organizing big events, organizers could even be talked about in a negative way or maybe something's not organized with that. Anybody who has selfish energy, that could be the topic of discussion. Party, Leo represents socializing, so parties and picnics and socializing outside in the sun. Even sporting events, that could have a conflict of some sort or a misunderstanding going to a sporting event. And also remember Mercury is about contracts and delays and traveling. And with all those things discussed, that could be an issue. Just remember to take your time, read, talk slow, read the fine print, and just reassess, do all the RE words during this retrograde period. If we are talking about current situation with current events, I am filming this um, July 24th, then we could be having issues with the presidency and rumors about the presidency and discussing leaders and a lot 
lot of negative discussions regarding leaders and our presidents retrograding during the Democratic Convention. So this is going to be really interesting how that plays out during that time. Mars in Gemini is going to square Saturn in Pisces, which Saturn is retrograding. This is going to be on the 15th. Besides the retrograde happening in the sign Leo, this aspect is pretty big. There's action and drive in learning, but there'll be some conflicts and restrictions in trying to learn something. And this could be hidden or you can't see it happening or um, there are some illusions happening with it. You want to proceed with caution with this energy. Be thorough and careful when performing any type of task, especially when it comes to talking or learning or being sociable, anything that deals with that Gemini um, multitasking energy. It could be a very frustrating time for a lot of people. And I really believe it'll be really frustrating for all my mutable energies, not just Geminis and Pisces, but also Sagittarius and Virgos. Your effort and your assertions, you may feel a block there or some type of restriction or feel limited. Um, Saturn is also the planet of fear. So there may be some fear you have and it could be really important to you, this fear, but you know, you have to be positive and not live out of fear, not live in lack, but think in abundance and um, out of love. You can have an issue and feel restricted when it comes to any type of authority figure. And again, that could be your parents, that could be a father figure, that could be an old mentor, an older man, your employer, anybody dealing in uniform, someone in the military or the police. Corporations and structures could be like limiting you from pursuing something or pursuing your goal in learning or pursuing you being able to multitask in something uh, like maybe you're driving and texting at the same time and a police stops you which is not just multitasking but illegal well in california it is or maybe you're eating and driving because that's not illegal authority figure as far as leaders and presidents so in a bigger picture this Mars and Gemini, which is pursuing information and a lot of information moving fast, squaring Saturn, maybe leaders that you can't see are uh, presidents who have leaders who I'm thinking leaders you can't see or maybe leaders who are very spiritual. You may respect a president or a leader or one of these older mentors and um, this day you lose respect from them. You get information and you lose respect from them. But there's frustration and delays with this aspect. Action versus restriction. That's what the competition and the, and the tension is happening there. Communication challenges with the Gemini. Balancing the action and caution at the same time. There could be some personal and professional challenges especially dealing with work. I'm thinking too that this could be a problem with the Democrats and Republicans, like the polarization is huge with this aspect. Diplomatic tensions, heightened internal conflicts, the infrastructure and transportation, they could have some issues together. Miscommunication in media and in government because Saturn represents the government, maybe even the FBI. Strain on a healthcare system too. So this one is a big one. So uh, watch out for that one coming up. Now on the 18th, Mercury and Leo is going to square Uranus and Taurus. So you may be bored and your mind is overly stimulated. If you're not a flexible person, this is going to be really frustrating for you. Your plans may not go as planned. There could be some unexpected car accidents, conflict with words. You're very impulsive. Maybe everyone's impulsive. Um, there could be some surprising bad news, unexpected rumors, and it could be regarding your job or what you value. Finances or even tourists represent singing. So like a voice in some way. Trade and stocks could have some conflict. If you're trying to work on some Something and it takes precise energy or detail energy, this wouldn't be the day to do it or the time to do it because it could last a little bit. Mercury moves fast, so I would say the day to do it. If you are working on something and you need the precision, the precision and you need um, to take your time, just do it another day. This is the day to be creative. Now, if you feel like this is great, I can work fast and I feel really sharp, maybe not write things down, but maybe like record yourself saying things because maybe writing it down is too slow for you. Like, this is how fast it can move because your thoughts could be racing. You may be nervous or have scattered energy. Just don't make any rash decisions with this. There could be some unexpected news, some disruption with technology. Again, the understandings could be worse this day and more conflicts worse with this Mercury retrograde. I'm just wondering what the technology will be and how it will be reacting. And yeah, social media, maybe with the celebrities because we are dealing with Leo and leaders and presidents. This is the day on the 18th. It is 
is going to be cray cray. And this is also the day before the Democratic convention. So this is really not good. This is not good for Kamala. There could be some changes in personal expression, like you decide to change your image, financial instability, unexpected expenses. Again, unexpected news. And I'm wondering if it's going to be about the president. Are there people who are running for president? Maybe some misunderstanding or rumors and uh, it's unexpected conflicts regarding our leaders and people running for president. Just remember to embrace any change and to be flexible. That one's going to be a doozy. Now, also on the 18th, Venus in Virgo is going to oppose Saturn in Pisces and Saturn is retrograding. This, again, I think is going to affect Kamala because, it, again, it is the day before the National Democratic Convention. Venus in Virgo is dealing with someone who works hard, who's a female, and it's going against the government. But there are some cold feelings happening. People are very cold. It's not very warm and loving. This is the least favorable transit for Venus. So, I mean, Kamala's luck is just really bad with this, but you know, things are destined to be the way that they are. There is a conflict between your sense of duty and discipline and relating to others. And also at the same time, enjoying yourself while doing it. Um, this is a short transit, so it doesn't last long. So this may not last um, during the whole convention or it may just be at the beginning of the convention or maybe it's just the day before. There's seriousness and responsibility and it may reduce the funness of things. And you don't want to pretend to have feelings for things you cannot relate to. There's loneliness and self-pity and that usually comes with this transit. Relationships may be feeling like they're forced. There's challenges with relationships and tension and distance. Commitment and responsibility can be an issue here, like dealing with relationship duties. Financial and material concerns also will be an issue with this aspect. There could be some financial restrictions, um, value reassessments, self-worth and personal growth because we're dealing with that Leo energy and there could be some self-criticism and some doubt, like feeling like you're unworthy or feeling that you're unattractive. I am very curious to see how this will work out with Kamala. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Now on the 19th, I think this is the day that the Democratic Convention actually starts and in America, and I'm sorry if you're not from America, but I, I'm talking about it all uh, globally and collectively. Um, the sun in Leo, which also represents leaders, is going to square Uranus and Taurus. So it's just negative vibe as a collective in the sky. Um, so the leadership or the joy and the fun here and expressing yourself and your confidence is not working well with change. And I'm talking about change with the things you value. So I wonder if Kamala is going to lose some resources all of a sudden or um, some funding. That could be a possibility with this aspect, but um, there's disruption, um, there's sudden upsets, and that could be happening during the Democratic convention and everyone's looking at it and everyone's watching it and it's like on stage with that leo energy and then all of a sudden there's a disruption um unexpected events um your normal routine or what you plan is just not working because remember mercury's retrograding in the sign leo at, with this in the sky too car can break down maybe you're having an argument about yourself or maybe you're having an argument about a leader or maybe you're having an argument about your ego there could be some conflicts with authority and with tradition challenging authority disruptive forces, questioning leadership, questioning who's going to be president. Maybe there could be an issue not with Kamala, but maybe the issue could be Trump because he does have a lot of Leo energy. And I think Bonds does too. So there could be conflict on there. And Mercury retrograding in a sign Leo can really bring everyone to, while this is on, but everyone's looking in that direction because they give off a lot of Leo energy. There's tension between freedom and stability, desire for independence, financial ups and downs, resistance to change. Relationships with others may be difficult at this time. Remember the danger of accidents. So I want everyone to really drive slow if you have to be out and about. And usually the accidents is because you don't have a healthy outlet. So if you're really angry at something, just be very careful. Or if you're really angry, if you really have anger or there's a conflict, take it out in a healthy way. Bonds may have bigger issues with this. It could happen to Kamala, but they have a lot of Leo energy. Now, Jupiter and Gemini is going to square 
Saturn in Pisces on the 19th. So again, another square on the same day. And it's about setting some boundaries here. People may be restless and uncertain about fit how they feel, but they don't really know quite why. And there's the thought of uh, long-term energy. And it makes me think of do they want this president for the four years? Reevaluating goals and ambitions. There is a tension between expansion and restriction, a conflict between the growth and limitations. People may have challenges with communication. Again, Mercury's retrograding, but Jupiter is in that sign Gemini, and there's tension there, and you don't understand why you're restricted. You can't even see why you're restricted, or maybe you're restricted or you're limited, and it's causing some... Um, fogginess or some uncertainty or some insecurity. Constraints regarding anything that's moving fast too. Gemini is also about speeches. So Jupiter and Gemini while giving a speech, there could be some disruption, not disruption, but a limitation on a speech. Maybe there's a time limit because Saturn does represent time and maybe they are cutting off the time and they don't know who's cutting off the time, who made these rules up, but maybe that could be happening. And on the 19th, you have two squares on the 19th and you have the Democratic Party starting on the 19th, but you also have a full moon in Aquarius and Aquarius is all about the group and fun. Um, it's very emotional and Aquarius, it's not very emotional. It's actually very cold and aloof, okay? Have a full moon, there could be some clarity, there can be some illuminations. Um, all of a sudden we're uh, seeing a light and aha moment. This is a zenith of the emotions and how you feel about home. And this could be really about your home if you live in America. There's emotional intensity, they're shedding a light on something. This is also about releasing and letting go. So I wonder who we are releasing and I'm wondering who we are letting go. Aquarius energy does represent someone who's very intellectual and very smart. So they could be releasing of that. Aquarius energy also, Kamala has Saturn and the planet of Aquarius on her midheaven. And I'm wondering if we're releasing her because she is also someone who represents something that's different because she will be the first Black female president running for president, first Black female president. And that is different. And that is something that's considered the future. Full Moon is about releasing. So that could be a, a possibility, just letting you know. It's definitely about a reflection and a reevaluation, a clearing out and looking back. And it's an emphasis on the individuality, authenticity. Like, you want your personal freedom. I wonder if she wants her personal freedom. I'm not sure. I'm just doing that out there. But it, you yourself could want personal freedom. Breaking free from what is normal, like let's change it up. That could be happening. And maybe, maybe she'll announce a female vice president. That could be something that she could be doing. Side note, when looking at her chart, I felt like in her third house, she was on top of Mars and Leo. And I feel like she could be announcing a leader who is a male. With that Aquarius energy and full moon, Maybe she wants to do the unexpected. But this could be on a personal level, breaking free from what people say is normal. Maybe you're focusing on innovation and progress, creative solutions, technical advancements, anything that represents the future, science and astrology. Energy is very social. So there could be some social connections, maybe some community involvement. It could be something that you have an aha moment to or something that you need to release and let go or you probably have to forgive um, social connection. It's also dealing with hum humanitarian energy. So um, that or um, clarity on that. Aquarius is very emotionally detached and it's based on rational thinking. Maybe there's a rational perspective that could be happening here, like a relationship conflict with clear and objective like a clear and objective mindset making decisions based on logic and not just your emotions balancing your emotions with your intellect i am so curious to see what happens during a democratic party i'm also very curious what everyone how everyone's going to be feeling within their homes during this full moon in aquarius when it is the week of i will also do the rituals that will also be in my members only and that link is down below but yeah, get ready for maybe having some overemphasis with rationality. You're too rational and you're not emotional. Maybe there's some community conflicts and you have some resistance to change. Full moon is also not working good with the universe, okay? Not only is it a full moon in Aquarius and there's intensity, 
but then we also have it opposing Mercury while it's retrograding in a sign Leo. So what are we going to hear? It's not going to sound nice and it's regarding leaders, okay? Have it squaring Uranus, which is something different and something we value. This is what makes me worry about Kamala during the Democratic Party, the convention. I'm not saying I'm voting for Kamala or I'm voting for Trump. I'm just, as a human, worried for someone who has to go through so much pressure. With this full moon, having these aspects attached to this full moon, there's total misunderstanding. There is an announcement that's not going to probably work in her favor or work in your favor regarding your self-expression, regarding your joy, regarding your fun, and regarding the high emotions that are kind of cold and detached. And probably there needs to be a clear expression. And maybe there is, it's not clear for some reason because that Mercury is retrograding in the sign Leo and your emotions are involved, but your emotions are detached. You're trying to act like, you know, I'm not affected by it. I'm aloof. But definitely some sudden changes and disruptions for sure that's going to happen with Uranus. And I wonder if this is going to affect the stocks somehow. Whatever it is, everyone needs to be adaptable and flexible, even Kamala. Um, there could be tension between the individual and the collective, maybe between Kamala and her Democratic Party. That's a big doozy. On the 22nd of August, Venus is going to be in a sign Virgo and it's going to square Mars and Gemini. And this is, you know, this one moves fast, but there's definitely conflict between women and, and men. Challenges between the social healing or healers who are having like a social party, doctors or not doctors, but really like nurses and are trying to pursue some information. If you are a healer of any sort, there is some conflict in your way with this aspect. Maybe you're naturally trying to attract something that's dealing with your hygiene, you know, it's naturally coming your way. But then it's moving too fast. Like you weren't able to get it because Mars and Gemini is like, whoa, 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 move too fast. You know, something like that. I hope that makes sense. Some tension in relationships, conflicts and disagreements, arguments with a partner over some small details, clashing when it comes to problem solving, um, balancing your independence and being together, uh, communication challenges with the Gemini. It's moving too fast, but Virgo wants the details. Maybe you're jumping to conclusions. Criticism and being very impulsive with the criticism. Virgo energy is going to be perfectionist. All the rising Gemini is being impulsive. So it's moving too fast and yet it's taking a criticism and it can't handle it. And it can cause them to be defensive. Conflict between your desires and what you're actually pursuing. If you want a stable relationship with that Venus and Virgo, but you're feeling restless and you're craving variety and you have to balance being flexible with practicality. So this is someone who creates the structure plans allows the spontaneous energy to come in and learning to be practical and accommodate at the same time. That is on the 22nd. Same day, the sun will enter Virgo and we are all about cleanliness and efficiency and practicality, organization, our health and wellness when the sun enters Virgo. Happy solar returns to all my Virgos. Maybe you're working on preventative care. You are maybe gonna be into service or um, contribution to get a pet because Virgo energy likes to take care of pets at home. Maybe you will be helping others or maybe working with a professional service that helps others. Self-improvement and learning. Organizing your learning, analytical thinking. I love Virgo energy because it can break it down and organize thoughts really well, like analyzing data and making informed decisions with that information. Troubleshooting problems at work or planning detailed projects, and that helps with that Mercury retrograding. So um, during Virgo season, start to declutter and organize your home, clean that closet, work out. Um, get some wellness going on. Work on, maybe you want to support others. Pursue some energy on self-improvement. Engage in any analytical thinking. During Virgo season, people are going to be moving slow. There will be some perfectionism happening, being overcritical on situations. Maybe you could be overwhelmed because Virgo is very hardworking. Holidays during Virgo season is Labor Day, of course, because I just said uh, Virgo energy is very hardworking and labor is work. International Literacy Day. Remember, I just told you that Virgo is about analytical thinking and what do you have with literacy? Mercury is the ruler of Virgo and Mercury is also the beginning of learning certain, certain things. So you have 
happening as well. It's also a lot of harvest festivals happening and Virgo is in charge of wheat and harvest and back to school season happens during Virgo and that's all about learning and using your brain and kids getting back to work. Now on the 27th at the end of the month we finally get something positive and that's when things start to look bright. Venus in Virgo is going to try and Uranus so now we really want something different but in a good way. There'll be positive changes in relationships, maybe attracting something new and you get money from it. Increased freedom and being really authentic. Financial opportunities and being different and being first, thinking of something out of the box or um, having something that's dealing with hope and futures and your um, networking and your socializing and your friends and something that's very innovative. Bracing change and adaptability and you're going to want to. Maybe trying something new when it comes to beauty and aesthetics and you really like it. Now, this is a trine, meaning that it just lands on your lap. So if you want to decorate your home, all of a sudden, it's, you have this moment where like, this is working for me. I actually like this aesthetic and it really looks good. This is going to work really well with all my earth signs. So Capricorns, Taurus, and Virgos. Spontaneous activities with loved ones. Supporting yourself with loved ones. Having some new experiences with loved ones. Yeah, that one's very positive. The 28th of August, Venus will oppose Neptune. So this is uh, the two energies that are about service here and sacrificing. And they're not getting along. It's happening in 29 degrees. 29 degree is a sense of urgency. So there may be a sense of hurrying up. Or maybe there is a culmination. Maybe there's an ending. There's a resolution. This could be... A transition to because it's transitioning to the next sign. So Venus, Neptune is going to stay in Pisces, but Venus is going to transit into the next zodiac sign, which is Libra. There could be some intense in having reality versus your illusions. This is not seeing eye to eye. It could be over idealistic. Maybe your disappointment. There's some disappointment what we're dreaming of. Relationship and boundaries. Are there any? Are you setting any? Overextending yourself. Um, there's compassion and sacrifice with energies. And you may be feeling like you need to rescue someone, but it's causing some conflict. There's realism when it comes to your finances. And there's also this opposing energy of fantasy. So maybe being tempted for like a quick rich scheme or financial commitments without doing any thorough research. Charity and generosity. And maybe it's going to cost you. It's also dealing with your self-worth and your self-image. Um, there's some spiritual and emotional healing. And there's some conflict here. And there could be some boundaries that are blurred. And it could be some financial confusion. After that, Mercury stations direct in the sign Leo. So it gets a little bit better at the end of the month, but August is a doozy. And we finally get a little clarity and it starts to really get clear all the way until August 11th. But there's some resolution and communications. Maybe all the rumors we heard about leaderships and presidents, maybe that will clear up by then or maybe by the 11th officially. There's forward movement and some projects and plans. And we get our enhanced uh, creativity and self-expression back. Social engagement and leadership, that will be cleared up, hopefully. It should be. Maybe we'll get our motivational speeches. They'll be very clear. People who are supposed to be leaders will finally be leading. Okay, August 29th, Venus enters Libra. And we're going to get flirting on. Seeing and having an equal partner. There's equality. There's fairness. Social fairness. Maybe you don't want to really commit to a love, but that's okay. It's also very undecided in energy. You can't make decisions. It's weighing everything out. Maybe it wants to see both sides, but because it wants to be fair. But there is charming feminine energy with Venus and Libra. Elegant and social grace. There's alluring beauty and beauty just alone. Venus and Libra could be a little distant though, because we are dealing with an air sign. But there is focus on harmony and relationships. Also the focus on justice and fairness with law. A romantic and social engagement will be happening a lot with Venus and Libra. People are very social. Appreciation of beauty and art. Go hit a museum up during this time. Whenever Venus is in a sign Libra, it's dosage. So really 
people really would be probably buying uh, things for their home and aesthetics. Makeup will probably be overspent. Be careful of overindulging. Also, there's the energy of avoiding conflict. That's not always good. Uh, passive aggressive energy, being very superficial and being very indecisive, especially when it comes to relationships or socializing. Now, Venus in Libra is going to try and Pluto once it enters Libra. And that's a zero degree. So we got some fresh starts here, maybe some fresh starts in relationships, maybe renewed energy. There's something that's going to be initiated. A zero degree is a very potent degree. So we really feel the Libra more than anything. Uh, so beauty is going to be huge during this day. There's also a threshold here, uh, a threshold of like you just finished Venus in Virgo and now you're in Libra. Like be aware of that. So very energetic activation, Libra aesthetics and harmony and balance. There's some transitioning happening with some relationships. Healing could be happening with the relationship. Now, Libra is all about the law, where Aquarius is all about humanitarian. And so maybe there is some breakthroughs or some transformation or some awareness, purification with humanitarian needs and making it fair. Venus in a sign Libra is all about the law and there could be some transformations with law for the future. Personally, there could be a transformation in healing through art that could be happening here and creativity or maybe in a very social environment that is very graceful. Uh, there could be some type of transformation and it's going to help you in your future and your hopes and dreams or maybe with a group or with a friend. So that is what we have for our month of August. There are a lot of downs but you know it ends up very positive at the end of the month we open it up with the new moon which is positive we have our downfalls all through the middle and it gets back up to positivity at the end so yes if you guys want a free reading i have that just for you click the link in the bio if you want to keep in touch with me weekly i put up the weekly transits i give that to you for free if you sign up for my newsletter and also it keeps me in touch with you i will see you guys next time thank you for watching bye